So I've been very adamant up until now that a path is a sequence of uninterrupted, unconditional steps. That means that every step would have to be followed diligently, the dialogue would continue to the end, and there would never be any deviations. Unfortunately, that's not real life. Real life, strange things happen. We have to be able to deal with them in the use case. Well, the construct for doing that are the things called alternate and exception paths, which I'd mentioned earlier. Now remember, an alternate path is a path that deviates from the main path, but returns to the main path to ultimately deliver the value that the use case promises, the post condition. The other uh, type of path are exceptions, and an exception path ultimately does not go back to the main path. It actually ends the use case with the post condition unsatisfied. When we're dealing with alternates and exceptions, how do we capture this information? What do they actually look like? Well, every one of them basically says, you know, you're going to start the use case with the standard path. That's the, the initial trigger has to be dealt with in the standard path. If there is a condition that occurs, a situation you recognize that causes the processing to deviate but go back to uh, ultimately deliver the value, you've identified an alternate path. If you identify a situation where you say, I can't finish the use case under this condition, you've identified an exception path. So we need to capture this information. Well, there's actually a section in my use case specification for alternate paths and a section for exception paths. In the alternate path, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name the path because I can have multiple alternate paths out of one use case. My naming convention is based on the fact that my standard path has numbers of each step, which is S01, S02, S5, S10, and so on. At the alternate level, I'm going to first start off by naming the alternate that uh, the alternative path that I am defining, and it's going to have an identifier A, letter A for alternate, 05, 10, uh, 01, 02, 03, and so on. Within that alternate path, all of the steps are going to be numbered A01-5, A01-10, and so on. Actually, the, the naming of the alternate path is going to be, it's going to have A01 and the at sign, which means this is where in the standard path this alternate is recognized. I would say if I am going through my standard path at step 20, I recognize, well, there's a condition that I have to deviate now, and you have to offer an alternative. It's going to be A01 at S20. Under what circumstances or what is the condition that I recognized that caused me to create this alternate path? So I could say something like customer um, credit card, a customer submits credit card. And uh, my alternate path at that point might be at A01 at S30 if a uh, credit card is rejected. Instead of the system coming back and approving your payment, it's going to reject the payment. That at convention is a way, a very a shorthand way of capturing the steps of the process that are going to happen under these circumstances. If I have the alternate path ID, I have the place where it deviates from the standard or from the alternate, by the way. You can have alternate steps deviating from the alternate path. And uh, under those circumstances, under what circumstances is it going to happen? Those three pieces of information are in the name of the alternate path. I then have all of the steps of the alternate path, which are just like a standard path. There's a dialogue. Actor's going to do something, system's going to do something. Actor's going to do something, system's going to do something. And at the end of the alternate path, I'm going to identify where in the path I came from do I go back to? If I came out of the standard path at S30 and the uh, customer, I've allowed the customer to submit an alternate credit card, I would be saying resume at S30. Tells the developer exactly where on the path, standard path or in the standard flow is this going to return to. If I'm dealing with an exception path as opposed to an alternate path, my naming conventions are very similar. It's going to be E01 at wherever in the, in the flow of things I identified this particular situation and what is the situation identified. If I were to say at uh, S30 again, where a customer is submitting credit card, a customer rejects or does not have any new credit cards to enter, I'm going to say perhaps uh, I'm going to have an exception path E01 at S30, all payment forms rejected, and now I'm going to have to deal with a situation where the customer is basically abandoning the order. How do we deal with that? What steps do I take? Again, it's going to be possibly actor, system, actor, system, exactly like any other path. Every path follows the same logic. 
You could basically say that the at convention that we're using is a way of saying this is a precondition for this alternate or exception path to be executed. But it has additional information because it also tells me where in the flow does this alternate or exception, uh, where is it recognized, and where can I start to identify that it's actually happening. To sum it up, we have the main path, which are common conditions, nothing ever goes wrong, everything is working fine, customer pays the premium, they have a valid credit card, everything, uh, what, life is wonderful, everything is done correctly. Then there are alternate paths where we would say basically some customers might want, not want to pay with a credit card, they want to pay with electronic money order, they might want to pay with a debit card, or they might want to pay with PayPal. So there are, each of those would be alternatives, which all would end up with the customer's premium being paid in this particular example. Or I have an exception path, customer credit card is rejected. I'm going to have to go back to, uh, this is the final payment form that they are offering me. Then I'm going to have that exception path that says, okay, we are going to not resume at, we're going to quit. So an exception path always ends with the word quit or stop or exit, however you want to call it in your terminology. Generally speaking, the main path plus the alternate path will ultimately end up with about, dealing with about 80% of the situations. And the exceptions are going to be about 20% under normal circumstances. Actually, that old 80-20 rule, also known as Pareto's Law, is a really good thinking way, a way of thinking about your use case. You're really trying to identify under your standard path, how can you deal with the most common situations, adding alternatives for anything that is going to be ultimately doing, uh, coming up with the same result, just through a different mode, and adding exception paths where they are necessary. The explanation of standard alternate and exception paths might be a bit difficult to follow, so we're going to offer you here a very specific example that shows you exactly what we're talking about. We're going to take as the example one of the transactions or one of the use, use cases that is very, very commonly used uh, in talking about use cases because most people can identify with this. We're going to talk about an ATM uh, at a bank where you're going to withdraw cash from your account. And what we're going to have first and foremost is the standard path that basically says, okay, we're going to have the uh, ATM is going to display what can you do. The cardholder uh, selects withdraw funds. The ATM offers your most common withdrawal amount and the account from which you withdraw it. Normally, the cardholder would accept that. That's the standard. ATM confirms the availability of the funds. There's money in the account. The ATM releases the cardholder's card back. Cardholder takes the card. The ATM gives him the money or her the money. The cardholder removes the money from the ATM. The ATM prints a requested receipt and the cardholder removes the receipt. The ATM goes back to the ready state. We're done. Customer has their money. The ATM is back to being ready for the next transaction. Everybody's happy. That's a standard path or the main path. If we stick with that, as we're going through this, we start to recognize, well, there are conditions under which things might be different. So this is where we're going to get into alternate and exception paths. The first alternate path we're going to talk about is the customer has requested account balance instead of requesting withdraw funds, something you can do on an ATM usually. Now, in this case, the ATM lists your available accounts and balances. The cardholder selects which accounts they would like to use and now we're going to resume at S10. So this particular situation, the uh, alternate path is going to go back to the standard path 10. It's going to actually uh, offer you again, what are the possible options that you have? Obviously, I would have an alternate path that, that is going to be the customer selects a uh, return card. So there is a possibility that they could quit the operation entirely at this point in time. So you're going to identify a series of alternate paths for different circumstances. Uh, for example, here A03 at 00. This means at the beginning of the use case where the precondition is, the ATM doesn't recognize that you put the uh, cardholder inserted as a bank card. It displays unrecognized card, rejects the card, and the cardholder removes the card and you can go back at S70. The ATM is back in ready state. It's waiting for a new card, whether from this cardholder or from a different cardholder. Another alternate path example, A04 at S10. The cardholder's bank denies authorization, uh, authentication, meaning the PIN is incorrect, the user uh, uh, has given the wrong PIN, the ATM is going to increment the number of authentication tries, so it's just keeping track of how often have you tried a PIN, you resume at S10. This particular one has a, a, an aspect that says uh, here, 
what happens if you exceed the authentication tries? Well, that's where we would have an exception path, because if you exceed the authentication tries, you are not going to come out of this on the happy path. Your precondition is not going to be that you have the money. If we're going to create an exception path now, E01, and you'll notice here it is at A0410. So within the alternate path A04, at step 10, the authentication exceeds expected uh, uh, attempts exceeded the limit. If that happens, what is the ATM going to do? Displays authentication card, authentication denied, contact your financial institution for a replacement card, and it shreds your card. Well, what happens then? Cardholder screams, draws a gun, shoots the ATM, ATM alerts the authority, shuts down, and refuses to testify, pending adequate protection. <laughs> it may sound a little silly, and it actually is, but reality is a whole lot sillier. I've actually have a colleague who experienced a situation where people were shooting up the ATMs because the ATM was not dispensing the money that they needed. That's not something that we would put in an alternate or exception path, just something that actually happened in real life. Now that you know what alternate and exception paths are, how do you find them? Where do they come from? My recommendation is go through your, to start with, go through your standard path, your happy path, basic uh, flow, whatever you call it, step by step. At each step in the, in the uh, basic flow, in the standard flow, ask yourself, at this point, could the actor decide to do something different? Meaning, are there any options or any alternatives they might choose in a, instead of following the standard path? Anything they could do differently that, based on what they want, would actually give them the value that they are trying to achieve. Another thing to think about is, should the application that you are defining force the uh, actor to do something different? Is there a reason that would cause the application to need to something uh, other than the standard under, under, under any circumstances at this point in the process? Any other options? Anything else that could possibly be there? Anything that could possibly go right or anything that could possibly go wrong? So what you're really trying to do is you're, really, you're try, going to go through your standard path and each step ask these questions. Once you've identified potential alternate and exception paths and flesh those out, you could read those to through, again, asking the same question, especially at your alternate paths. At each step of the process, is there anything that could possibly go wrong? Is there anything that people might want to do differently? You can ultimately identify alternate and exception paths through a process of questioning and identifying anything that might cause the application or the actor to react in a manner that is not already specified.